<laughs> and we're back with the next segment uh, with Aaron Crawford on social engineering. Before we get to that segment, check out our new shows, Hack Naked TV with John Strand, whose latest edition was actually just tweeted by Blip.TV itself. His show is <laughs> freaking awesome. Got to check that out. Hack Naked at Night with Larry and Darren. all the clowns. <clears throat> Paul.com Espanol with Carlos Perez. <laughs> Excuse me. We can edit that out, can't we? Um, our only non-computer security related show dedicated to cigar enthusiasts. Recording tomorrow night, The Stogie Geeks, with myself and Tim Muggerini tomorrow night, 8.30 p.m. Check out the Paul.com live stream, and you can watch that show live while we get drunk and smoke cigars. Uh, and be sure to register for Carlos Perez's class, Introduction to PowerShell for Security Professionals, happening at DerbyCon. Now, on to Aaron Crawford. In 2010, the Kansas City InfraGuard chapter held Kansas City's first mock cyber warfare event called Cyber... Hold on. Cyber Raid. There, an unfair advantage was held by a red team member, Aaron Crawford, who used an elevated form of social engineering that not only fooled the blue team and event organizers, but also FBI agents. Aaron is here to provide us an elevated playbook of what to look for in social engineering campaigns and how to prevent them. He is here today to show us how various trust models, training, and experience are circumvented by new approaches to social engineering. For example, a simple power strip and a baby monitor can be combined to be a cheap, undetectable listening device which would evade detection from my cheap 1599 wireless RF detector. Uh, and USB memory sticks can be used successful. Welcome, Aaron, to the show. How you doing? Woo! Aaron's very excited to be on the show. And he's Color wearing... number nine. I want them NASCAR tickets. He's wearing a mask, which is very disturbing. Yeah, those NASCAR tickets. We're going we're gonna to give you inside uh, the right-hand turns. Yes. Turn oh, left. Go fast. Yeah. <laughs> Crash often. Uh, so, Aaron, tell us about social engineering using product packaging. Well, it's it's very simple, but it's a very very effective technique. We've I, all heard, heard the same story of package. dropping the USB uh, sticks yeah. in the parking lot, and yeah. what happens after that. But we've had enough awareness of that now that you just can't do that. So, how do you get something like simply a USB stick into an enterprise, or say if you're doing a pen test, how do you get an object into the, your target zone? And the easiest way to do that is by using uh, the trust models we're all aware of, which is marketing, packaging, and design. We all buy products such as meat or food at the store because we know that meat is prepared in a certain way, it's packaged in a certain way, and therefore we assume and trust that it's safe. Uh, the same can be done with other products. Say if you have a USB stick, you want to get in to an environment. You just can't hand it over, you can't drop it in the parking lot. So why not package it? in something that looks very nice, very professional, and realistic. Something that people would accept and be looking for, or would desire or want to use. By doing that, you're going to fool them and get, a, uh, get the thing into the target zone, such as this. Just simple packaging. Aaron's you can holding, set and take a normal little USB stick. Aaron's holding up his little stick for the camera, for all to see. That's what he said. <laughs> and it's blue. <laughs> And by just doing simple packaging, you can get it in there. What happened is at the Cyber Raid tournament, I didn't have an advantage over a lot of people. You have people like Bill and Trent who are on the red team. I needed to set myself apart. So what I did is I packaged a bunch of USB sticks with customized uh, poison ivy and took them in and dropped them into the red team area or the blue team area ahead of time by... Uh, dressing up in a suit and picking some locks at the hotel and dropping them off. By packaging them in a professional manner, Bill and several of the other organizers assumed that everyone else had put them into play or someone had provided them. Hmm. In addition to that, people were looking for them in the swag room. So it effectively got into play. People were opening them up and were about to use them. I had <clears throat> to step in and after a period of time, once I found out they were using personal equipment with VMs, I had to come forward and say, hey, I don't want to be the guy who blew up someone's computer. You right. need to take these out of the game. Yeah. And <clears throat> So, Aaron, uh, but you looked at some product packaging uh, that yeah. really kind of exemplified uh, what we're talking about with respects to using the product packaging as part of your social engineering attack, which I think is the, one of the most creative 
um, and uh, tactful uh, social engineering attacks I've seen in some time. Yeah, if you go out onto the wiki, uh, there's just some examples, but you can also get in the frame of mind by just going to a store and walking around, seeing how many items on the store shelves have instructive and directive packaging. You can basically create stuff that instructs people to do certain things, and they're going to do it. No one here on this cast or anywhere else is immune to it. When you think about it, you go to the store, you buy a product, say a Wi-Fi detector from the man's candy store, and you went through it, you look through the directions, you look through what it provided on the packaging, and that's what pr prompted you to buy it, pick it up, and use it in a certain way. That same thing and concept can be applied to anything else you want to get into, say, a pen testing region or uh, an attack. You can go through, check out, follow instructions like, you know, the warning labels on things are very powerful. Think of all your medications out there. They have do not open or use if seal has been tampered or broken. That kind of instructive packaging you can use in your advantage. Say if you want that USB stick in, put on the label and packaging, do not use if seal is broken. Add in some additional steps to validate the uh, packages awareness, the packages chain of custody. Yeah, so what's happening? It, it's interesting how you you use that in the social engineering attack. Basically, you're putting a seal over the package and you're saying, "Do not use if this seal has been broken." Is that attack to gain the trust of the person you're trying to socially engineer? Like when we hear people um, like Logan come on the show and they talk about, "Well, it's all about gaining trust." By saying, "Hey, there's a seal on this, therefore you should trust it." I mean, that's a huge part of the attack. Exactly. Think again of how you buy and purchase products in a store. You buy them because they're sealed. There's a guarantee, such as a hologram or a seal or stickers or the physical clamshells that we all hate to open. You know that product hasn't been tampered with. You have a minor reassurance of the chain of custody mm -hmm. of that product. Mm -hmm. So you're gaining the trust and you're violating that trust model that someone has constructed. Um, now, you have some product packaging from a light bulb. Can you take us through some of the uh, the items that you saw there that could be used in social engineering? Uh, just on the light bulb packaging on the wiki, if you look through, you see various things that point out, hey, the value, what it does. It's now smaller than ever. Things like that. You're selling. You're not only selling, but you're instructing the person of what the benefit is. Uh, in this case, you have immediate uh, cost savings. It says save $38. You also have long-lasting, instant-on, energy-saving. You can start my, my, my looking at that My wife sometimes says that about me, long-lasting and instant-on. <laughs> well, no? the truth in advertising is only in the eye of the guy. <laughs> That's how created. I market myself anyway. <laughs> so those things you can start looking at thinking about, like, say, for instance, uh, correlating it to an attack – Look at where you're attacking, and that's another thing to key into when you're doing all this, is a lot of organizations have what they call a style book or a rule book. That's a thing that a lot of people need to start looking into on pen testing or doing attacks is because it's a very, very powerful product and uh, item. What it is is it says, hey, say in this instance, Samuel Adams, if you're going to partake in creating an ad or marketing for Samuel Adams – you have to use the following colors, the following fonts, the following uh, verbiage, the following logos can only be used in a certain size, a certain configuration. You can find those pretty readily for most organizations, or you can request them from their marketing departments, which are pretty easy to get a hold of and pretty uh, enthusiastic as well. With those, you can really center in on how the product for the place you're attacking or the entity you're attacking is designed and what's going to be looking for. Th think back to a lot of those phishing emails you get that are poorly worded, that use the English and everything. Those don't work on people because they're not properly worded or targeted or thought through. Getting a style book from a company mm -hmm. will really help you set everything apart and really key into the culture and the communication that that company and its uh, enterprise and employees are expecting. Mm -hmm. So what can we learn from Advil liquid gels? Uh, Advil liquid gels, going back into it, by the way, these products are not endorsed by Paul.com. They were just conveniently located near a camera. Actually, actually, the Advil is for Friday mornings. Just saying. <laughs> 
Well, on here, zooming in on the uh, read and keep carton for complete warnings and information. Again, you're instructing and using instructions and directions in a very uh, open and trusting manner. You're looking out for people's safety. And they're going to be more inclined to accept that if you do a very soft kind of advertising with that or soft direction. Not a hard direction uh, like buy now, as seen on TV, things like that. But here you're you're kind of doing a little bit of a soft push there. Well, uh, you know, it, and, um, Advil is distributed by Pfizer, who distributes drugs that could help your soft push. If you needed that. That's true. That's what he thing. said. Jack. <laughs> Just saying. Sorry. <laughs> also, we get back again to the uh, validation of the uh, integrity there of the do not use if the seal has been broken tack. That's a very powerful thing that you can use to help gain trust, violate trust, and reassure people. Is hey, if it's broken, it's busted, it doesn't look good, please don't use it. And right. most people are just going to ignore that, but they're going to see that and subconsciously sit there and go, hey, it's okay. That's another step to saying, hey, everything's fine. And in the case of the uh, cyber raid, it worked quite well. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> So tell me about uh, Tron Legacy action figures. You have to steal them from your spouse uh, in order to take pictures. Gotcha. Um, again, here we have warnings on them. On uh, the first couple, you have warnings about choking hazards, uh, things like that. Again, it's the soft push. You're looking out for safety. You're looking out for the person who's picked up the product. Uh, again, on the uh, Korra figure, it has a little thing of try me where you could squeeze the action figure and it lights up. If you invoke more of a active push instead of a soft push where you bring in interaction into the product, mm. that'll help you as well. Uh, the try me or see the sound, see how it lights up, things like that. It really pulls us into package, uh, the product through the packaging and allows us to identify the product and kind of sneakily try it before we buy it. Mm -hmm. Very nice. <clears throat> so from there, you came up with your own product specifically for this hacking challenge, which sounds very much like a CCDC uh, type competition. I, I have some questions for you along those lines. So when you said, okay, I want to make this product, it's a completely fake product. It's targeted at my target audience for this basically penetration test. Uh, how did you, like, what are some of the things behind where you bought the actual packaging and where, how you printed out the cardboard and got all this stuff? Um, I had kind of, that was my advantage. I've had 15 years experience of graphic design and advertising from everyone from Budweiser on down. So I kind of went through my list of providers and stuff, but what you can do is go out onto the web Start Googling little phrases like the instance of this, the uh, USB, it's called a clamshell packaging. Mm -hmm. And what you can do is just go out and Google clamshell packaging. And here's something for all the listeners out there, uh, freebie. If you want to get it for free for, say, this event where you don't want to have to order 11 billion different mm. copies of it, call up the marketing department of any firm or provider and tell them you're doing an evaluation for a sell to a client. Tell them, I really am interested in your product. I don't have any money or the budget approved at this time to buy 11 billion of these clamshells. Can you help me convince my client here? Can you send me some samples, please? You may have to pay for shipping, but in all likelihood, you're going to get those products for free. Uh, then from there... The clamshell allows you to do a lot of uh, free and cheaper packaging because if you look at the design on the website, all you have to do is create a card or an insert that goes in there to make it look professional. That can be done on your home printer or you can go to a local print shop and get it done pretty cheaply as well. Mm -hmm. now, was that actual cardboard that you had, like a, a thicker paper? It's a 100-pound test uh, printing paper it's glossy it's mm -hmm. a little thicker kind of like a uh, action figure right uh, backing um if you ever have an issue and you're trying to figure this stuff out one of the best resources is to go to your local uh print shop and ask them and they go hey mm -hmm. i'm designing a product or i'm designing x what kind of paper samples do you have or what kind of things do you recommend 
In addition to that, they can help you out with cheap printing. And this is another little tip for everyone out there. You can go and have them print a digital print instead of offset printing, which means they use a digital printer, not a huge press machine. Right. It'll be much cheaper. Or you can request something in the industry called a rainbow print, which is a test print off the uh, line before you do anything. And you can get those much cheaper than an actual print process. Mm-hmm. Uh, so did you order? You ordered some additional stickers for uh, realism, correct? Uh, again, those are uh, holograms, and it's another um, mechanism to add validation and integrity and the perception of integrity. Again, if you call up a marketing uh, department of a provider and go, "Hey, I really need some free samples to uh, impress and uh, get a client on board to purchase this," they will shower you with holograms and stickers and all sorts of tamper seal stuff that you could ever imagine. Mm. Nice. Um, and from there, it's just the USB stick was a standard box store USB stick that we threw a hologram on and uh, an Avery label printer label on it to cover up the box store logo. On the back, you'll notice that there's another validation mechanism built in with that uh, stick. There was a serial number on that Avery label. And on the instructions on the back of the card, it talked about, hey, if the sticks... USB um, serial number does not match up to the one on the back of the packaging here. Please notify event officials immediately. So again, another layer of mm. uh, checks. That's awesome. Um, <clears throat> so you are teaching a, a class on this subject beyond social engineering, violating trust models through marketing. At the Computer Enterprise and Investigations uh, Conference next week in Las Vegas, uh, we'll be going over how to construct devices, how to design devices and packaging, but more importantly, how to record and report the metrics if you use it in a pen test. Mm. In addition to that, how to prevent it and how to educate your company or staff to look out for these things and deal with them. Excellent, excellent. Aaron, thank you very much for appearing on Paul.com. I thought that this was a refreshing look at um, a different aspect of social engineering I had never considered before. Um, so again, thank you very much for coming on and, and sharing the content. Uh, again, there's a link um, to the conference that uh, Aaron mentioned, the CEIC conference, uh, where he will be uh, teaching his class. So Aaron, again, thank you very much. Thank you very much. We'll have some more as soon as it clears the lawyers. Excellent. We're looking forward to hearing more on this subject and more interviews and masks. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. Your tickets are in the mail. <laughs> yes, you. your NASCAR tickets are in the mail. <laughs> Thank you for being the ninth caller and calling into Paul.com. You rock. <laughs> Thanks, Aaron. <laughs> and with that, we'll take a short break and come back with uh, another fabulous technical segment.